So my question is the difference between detachment and releasing resistance. The, where I'm going with this is that I have certain buttons that get pushed. I see something that, you know, upsets me a little bit. And do you believe that if the button was pushed often enough, you'd stop being bothered by it? I would hope so. I would hope so. Turns out not so much. I'm sorry, what? Turns out that isn't the way it works. The more you push the buttons that bother you while you're being bothered by them, the more momentum you get about them and the more sensitive to them you are. So, are there any radio stations that you don't care to listen to? Yes. Do you listen to them until they go away? No. So what do you do? You just tune to something that you prefer. Yes. And you could call that detachment or you could call it focus. Because you're a transmitting and receiving mechanism and so when you focus on something that you do want, you're not focused upon something that you don't want. So it's just about choosing. But you're not talking about pushing your own buttons. You're talking about other people pushing them? Yes. Well, what I'm talking about is what I'm hearing is it's sort of like detachment is the word that keeps coming up. And for me, detachment... Here's the way we would apply it if we were standing in your physical shoes. If there was a strong probability that we could detach from the subject. In other words, if we could remove our focus from it, in other words, we don't live with this person or we don't live near this problem, if we could live a reasonable amount of our life, say 60 or 70 or 80%, 85, 80, 90% of it, if we could live 90%, if we could live 90 of our day-to-day -day experiences without focusing on it, if it was just a matter of turning off the television and therefore it never touched us, then we would say that that form of detachment would be beneficial, wouldn't you? But if it's someone that is up close and personal to you, something that you can't walk away from or move away from, then it would serve you to bridge your belief about it. It would serve you to go to work on your own reasons for feeling resistance about it. Now, if you really want to know what we know about this important subject, we would say to you, and we're saying it very gently because we don't want to freak any of you out. We would say that it would serve you to detoxify yourself on every subject that bothers you. It's just that you don't have enough life left to do that. You just can't work the bugs out of all of that, nor do you need to. And usually in the process, you get more momentum going toward more of what you don't want. And so it usually doesn't work out very well. So. Use your own judgment. Those subjects that you don't need to think about, don't. And those subjects that come up a lot that bother you, find a way of looking at them in a way that feels better to you. Bridge the beliefs. Bridge your own beliefs about it. Say to yourself things like we just said to our friend just a moment ago. This isn't something that really needs to affect me. This is not personal to me. This is not my point of attraction. Esther said, and really meant it, I'm not going to pick any more fights with anybody about anything and I'm not going to fight back. And then every now and again, something comes up that she feels like fighting back about. That's just not right. That's not what I planned. That's not what I want. I don't really like that. And as soon as she picks the fight, she doesn't like having picked the fight and she knows that it could have been a different way. The last thing that we're asking you to do is to look at unwanted things and pretend like you like them. That's not the process of coming into alignment. But what you do want to do is play down things that bother you and play up things that please you. And before long, you'll have a consistent enough vibration. We've been saying this, that law of attraction matches you up with things that are active in your vibration. Maybe we haven't said it exactly that way to you these days. Law of attraction matches you up with things that are active in your vibration. So if you're detached from it, they're not active things in your vibration. So law of attraction is not going to match you up with anything that you're detached from. But then something comes along and suddenly it flares up. It's active again. Now law of attraction is going to match you up with that. And so don't try to be so precise in the way that you live life that you're wanting to run away and hide and detach yourself from things. Just make a decision, a sort of overall blanket decision that goes like this. I have the ability to focus myself into a better feeling place no matter what. I have the ability 
in time, maybe not right now, this red hot minute, but I have the ability sometime today or sometime within the next hour to find vibrational alignment with my inner being, or I can change the subject altogether and find alignment with my inner being and then go back and address that subject and see if my inner being has a different point of view about that subject. There are all kinds of ways to do this. You see, the only thing that we would not do if we were standing in your physical shoes is feel a grudge and keep it going. We just wouldn't let hot buttons that come up all the time remain hot because that is the slow, gradual, but steady eroding of your alignment. And that's what makes you stop liking life. It's what makes you not have fun anymore. It's what causes you to wonder why you're born and all other levels of depression. It's not big things. It's not big catastrophic things that are negative that upset you. It's that steady eroding that you do to yourself by focusing on things that bother you and by either not detaching if you can or bridging the way you feel about it. Really important conversation. Thank you so much. It's like step five. You talk about step five and we want to go back to something that we just said, because we can feel something going on and we want to make sure that we have been clear about this. We don't mean go into therapy and get to the bottom of anything because there is no bottom. You will not get to the bottom. You will just keep momentum going. We mean if you've decided that you can't detach from it because it comes up too often, we mean bridge it by making the statement that feels better about it, not looking for the trouble that caused it, making the statement about it that feels better, looking for your empowerment within it. So for example, our friend who was just talking about sometimes people say things, Esther was that way. She didn't for a while after Jerry made his transition, she just didn't want people talking about stuff like that. And everywhere she went, that's what they wanted to talk about. The first movie, she went with her sisters to a movie and they said, what should we see? And Esther said, the Iron Maiden was just out about Margaret Thatcher. Let's watch that. Let's watch that because it'll be political. It won't be romantic. It won't be a love story and it won't be about death. <laughs> and then the opening scene was this woman sitting at her desk with her deceased husband walking around in ghost form in the background. <laughs> And Esther looked at one sister and then the other and said, what are the odds of that? And we said, 100%, 100%. And the things you're not detached from that are active in your vibration are going to come around and come around and come around and come around. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to find something that feels better about something that doesn't feel so good. But when you do, Oh, the clarity that comes from finding that improved. That's what you're all looking for. That's the expansion that you're all looking for anyway. Let us make a very strong and powerful, most important statement that we've ever made to anyone. The thing that is most important. Oh, we can say this better. The thing that you like most about being in these physical bodies is your expansion. And nothing is more exhilarating than to move into a new place where resistance exists and then move through that resistance into the pure expansion. Did you hear that? In other words, the resistance is necessary for the expansion, but to move through the resistance into the expanded place, that's the ecstasy that you're all about. You see, that's what it's all about. And most people are choosing something quite different. Most people are saying, well, I'll just go and hide because I don't want any of this. And then they feel stuck in the mud. They don't feel any expansion. And then they feel dull. They feel tired. They feel bored. They're not loving life. And they think the only alternative is to detach from it altogether and just sort of shut it down in time or to feel bad. And we say, no, there is another alternative. You can become who you really are by choosing a subject that takes you there and do that often enough that that's the steady place place where you hang out. And then in time you can regard any subject and stay there. And that's the compassion that your source lives. That's how your inner being lives. That's what you want. You came for expansion, which you can't have without contrast. And you don't like the resistance that's in contrast and you can't have it both ways. You got to accept the contrast because you've got to accept your reason for being. 
You've got to accept the contrast, but you don't have to stay stuck in the feeling of the resistance. You can go towards your own expansion. We'll say it again. Your expansion is all about the rocket of desire that came out of contrast. Resistance is necessary for expansion. How's that? Resistance is necessary for expansion. But once you've taken the jump, follow the bounds. That was good. That was really good. Enough. Good. Tying that into step five. That is step five. Yes. That's yes. exactly what step five is. Yes. I'm having a step one moment and I'm loving it because I understand the value and power of contrast and because I know that I'm not a resistant person. I know that I'm an aligned person who's having a contrasting moment. You might want to remember this forever. Ready? Really ready? Yes. yes. When you made the decision to come into your physical body from non-physical, you jumped right into step five. Boom. Right into contrast, loving it. Right into contrast, loving it. Remember you cried your way in? <laughs> right into contrast, loving it. You knew I'm going into contrast, but you know what else you knew? I'm going into expansion. I'm going into deliberate creation. I'm going into creating my own reality. I'm going into purposeful living. I'm going in to the joyous leading edge of creation. I'm pure positive energy, deliberately choosing contrast for expansion, not just contrast for my expansion, contrast for the expansion of the universe at large, contrast for the expansion of the source within me, leading edge contrast for leading edge expansion. And then you get here and you go, Ooh, I'm sure I didn't mean any of that. Yes, you did. You just forgot. Love contrast. If I'm loving. Nope, 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 nope. Step five is love and contrast. Love and contrast. Does your inner being notice that you are in a state of contrast? And does your inner being have to join you in the trauma? And if your inner being did, would you feel negative emotion? Isn't the existence of negative emotion proof of the love source is? Yes. Even while you're having negative emotion? Yes. Did you get that? So love and negative emotion can coexist because your inner being is always love while you are having negative emotion. Well, that must be helpful somehow. That must be helpful to know that, that even in the negative emotion that you're feeling, that the only reason that you could even feel it is because of the love that the broader part of you is experiencing in the same moment. That has to be helpful. Think about it for a moment, isn't it? Isn't it? No, Abraham, I wish that you weren't loving and then I wouldn't have to feel this negative emotion because of my inability to focus where I mean to. If you would take your contrast in smaller doses, this would all be easier for you. Which means if you would understand momentum and sense it when it gets going. Yes? Yes. Yes. Have you ever thought something and when you thought about it, it didn't feel good? Then you said it out loud. <laughs> and then you thought, well, that was dumb. <laughs> but there it is out there. It's out there, the momentum. And then you're embarrassed that it's out there, so now you try to defend it. Can you feel how the momentum's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Any step along the way, you could shut it down. You could stop the momentum. You could change the subject or pivot by looking for positive aspects within it. It's interesting that all these years later, we're having the same conversation, but can you feel the leading edginess of it? Yes. Can you feel the fine tuning that you're doing mm -hmm. here in this? Yeah. Enough? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Yes.